Welcome. My name is Jenny Tracy, and I am the Reese the Cross America Bloomington Coordinator. I am thrilled to see you today. It is freezing out here, but you're still here, and that matters. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the mission to remember the fallen, honor those that serve and their families, teach the next generation the value of freedom. Today, we're blessed to be able to honor veterans at Rose Hill Cemetery, as well as White Oak Cemetery. I would like to introduce the Southern Indiana Pipes and Drums. They'll be entering, or they're like located over here on the left-hand side or your right-hand side. They will be playing the Scotland Brave and the Bidawa. Thank you, Southern Indiana Pipes and Drums. We asked to start the event, if you will all please join me in a moment of silence to remember the fallen, prisoners of war, those missing in action, and honor those who have served and are serving this great nation's armed services. Thank you. I would like to introduce this year's MC, Mr. Mike Pifert. Mike is a Sons of the American Legion Detachment of Indiana past commander, past commander of Squadron 18 here in Bloomington, and is the current Veterans of Foreign Wars Auxiliary President. We are delighted to have Mike present us today with today's ceremony of Reese Across America. Good afternoon and thank you for being here today. Uh, first I need to find out if Rusty Shields is here. Need to find it, out. I need to find out if Rusty Shields is here. Yeah. No. no. Jenny, how would you like to move along? Okay. Rusty was going to sing the national anthem for us, so <laughs> we'll we'll, uh, we'll dispense with that. But I am pleased to ask Grace Myers to come forward now and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Grace is this year's Monroe County Fair Queen. She is an IU student, and she is the proud daughter of two veterans. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Grace. 
Okie dokie. Well, again, thank you all for joining us here today. This year across the country at more than 3,400 participating locations like this one, there are millions of Americans gathering safely as one nation to remember, to honor, and to teach. We're all proud to be Americans that live in a free society made up of many people from many walks of life. The freedoms we enjoy today have not come without a price. Lying here before us and in cemeteries throughout this nation are men and women who gave their lives so that we can live in freedom and without fear. We can worship as we see fit. We can raise our children to believe as we do. We're free to vote for the leaders of our choosing, and we have the right to succeed and to fail at whatever endeavor we pursue. The United States of America was founded on the ideals of freedom, justice, and equality. Our nation stands as a shining beacon of liberty and freedom to the world. We thank those who gave their lives to keep us free, and we shall not forget them. We shall remember. Today, more than ever, we reflect on our nation's veterans and active duty service members who have and continue to fight to protect the innocent and the oppressed. This nation has always been the first to stand up for the freedom of people from around the world. Many of you here today have answered that call and served your country well. And for this, we say thank you. We are honored to know you. There are many men and women serving today in all branches of the military, here at home and in places far away that most of us have never heard of. These men and women are part of the best trained, best equipped force in the world. We honor them and their families for the sacrifices they make each day to keep our country safe from terrorism, hatred, and injustice. Quoting our 40th United States President, Ronald Reagan, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men and women were free. We have a wonderful lineup of VIPs joining us today. And I'm going to try to get through this list. And the VIPs are, for the most part, seated and standing over here in our, in our uh, underneath the tent. What I would do is ask each of you, as I call your name, if you could just wave to us or step out to the side of the tent. Just let us know you're here. If you're able, please take a seat. I know not everybody has that. All right, here today uh, representing Daniel Guthrie chapter of Indiana Sons of the American Revolution, also the Sons of the American Legion, American Legion Post 18, and VFW Post 604 is Jim Arnold. Oh, and if, if we may, please let's hold the applause till the end. We'll get through all this. There's a lot of them, believe me. Um, Commander of uh, DAV Bedford Chapter, Bradford Bow. Commander of AMVETS Post 2000 is John Bowman. From the Wreaths Across America Committee is Julie Bruce. We have the President of AMVETS, Ladies Auxiliary 2000, Teresa Chestnut. We have Cadet Second Lieutenant Edward Gatewood of the Monroe County Composite Squadron Civil Air Patrol. <laughs> From the Veterans of Foreign Wars Auxiliary Department of Indiana is Jan Torgerson. We have with us today Monroe County Commissioner Penny Givens. And we have uh, some folks I'm going to mention in a moment. Let me pass over that just, just for a moment. From the Monroe County History Center is Gigi Kirkley. 
We have Lisa Leifert of the uh, American Legion Auxiliary. She's the seventh district chaplain, also a member of Unit 18, and she's a past department president of the American Legion Auxiliary. <laughs> Maybe they're frozen together, I don't know. <laughs> uh, past president of the American Legion, uh, Auxiliary Department of Indiana, past president of the American Legion Auxiliary District 4, and member of the American Legion Auxiliary Unit up in Kendallville, Indiana, uh, at post 86, is Nancy McGinnis. We have a charter president of Kiwanis Club of South Central Indiana and charter president of 25 plus Kiwanis that care, past Kiwanis Indiana District Governor, and currently serving as Hoosier Division Lieutenant Governor for Kiwanis is Vanessa McClary. You met her a moment ago. We have our Monroe County Fair Queen, Grace Myers. Whoop, whoop, Grace Myers. No, sorry about that. <laughs> President of the Daughters of the American Revolution, Bloomington Chapter, is Nancy Patterson. We have uh, Bloomington City Council member, Isabel Piedmont Smith, who represents District 5 here in town. American Legion Auxiliary Unit member, Carol Robinson, is with us. The American Legion Auxiliary Department of Indiana Chaplain and past American Legion Auxiliary 7th District President and member of Unit 197 in Shelburne is Tana Shepard. From the Cloven Hoofs Motorcycle Club is Amy Thomas. Uh, Vice President, American Legion Auxiliary Unit 18, and American Legion Auxiliary District 7 Vice President, Jenny Tracy. We have Joanna Wall, who is President of Veterans of Foreign Wars, John Brighton Auxiliary Unit at uh, 7850 in Gosport. We have Indiana University Vice Provost for External Relations and Bloomington Assistant Vice President for Strategic Partnerships, Kirk White. From the Monroe County Council is Kate Wiltz. And our president of the Veterans of Foreign Wars Auxiliary Unit 1257 in Martinsville is Curtis Zook. So would you please welcome all of our VIPs at this time. I also want to mention the names of the Southern Indiana Pipes and Drums Corps who are with us today. This would include Lewis Hendricks, who is a drummer and an Army veteran, Stephen Eddington, Pipe Sergeant and a Navy veteran, Bryce Bookwalter, drummer and Army veteran, John Campbell, drummer and Air Force veteran, Jeff Brenniger, Pipe First Sergeant, Martin Kindig, Pipe Sergeant, and Jeannie Cox, drummer. Thank you to the, the Southern Indiana Pipes and Drums. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the Deputy Mayor of the City of Bloomington, John, Don Griffin, Jr., who will be bringing us greetings, I hope. Welcome, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, folks. How you doing? Um, it is cold, isn't it? I'm Don Griffin. I'm the deputy mayor for the city of Bloomington. And uh, on behalf of Mayor Hamilton and the rest of the city, uh, it is my sincere pleasure to bring to you greetings and present a proclamation. Whereas the Reeves Across America organization was formed in 2007 as an extension of the Arlington Reeves project of 1992, where reeds were laid at the graves of fallen soldiers at Arlington National Cemetery. And whereas the mission of the Reeds Across America organization is to remember that fallen, the fallen 
and to honor those that serve their families and teach the next generation about the value of freedom. And whereas each year, this mission is carried out by the coordination of wreath laying ceremonies on a specific Saturday in December at Arlington National Cemetery, as well as at veteran cemeteries at other locations in all 50 states and beyond. And whereas the American Lung Cancer Screening Initiative and Women's Lung Cancer Forum are committed to educating about lung cancer and lung cancer screening, working to increase lung cancer screening rates in Bloomington, Indiana, and whereas one of the patriotic goals of all of the following organizations, American Legion Auxiliary Unit 18 of Bloomington, Veterans of Foreign Wars Auxiliary 604 Bloomington, Bloomington Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, Veterans of Foreign War Wars Post and Auxiliary 7850 Gosport, AMVETS Auxiliary 2000, Kiwanis of South Central Indiana, Kiwanis Bloomington, National Sons of American Revolution, Daniel Guthrie Chapter, Monroe County Composite Squadron, Civil Air Patrol, and Cloven Hooves Motorcycle Club is to honor, respect, and support veterans and their families. And whereas these organizations foster cooperative arrangements with the Wreath Across America organizations in pursuit of our common goal, and whereas Saturday, December the 17th, 2022 has been designated by the Wreath Across America organization at the date of these ceremonies to, uh, to occur. Now, therefore, I, Don Griffin, as Deputy Mayor, and John Hamilton, Mayor of the City of Bloomington, do hereby proclaim December the 17th, 2022, as Wreaths Across America Day. Thank you for making this all possible. Jenny Tracy is going to accept the proclamation. Thank you. Thank you, Don, and thank you to the city of Bloomington. I would like to introduce our keynote speaker today, Shawe Liu, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Air Force, is Chairman and Professor of Aerospace Studies at Indiana University. Also, he commands Air Force ROTC Detachment 215. Lieutenant Colonel Shu, uh, Liu enlisted in the Air Force just about 20 years ago. He's risen through the ranks since then. He's been deployed overseas. He's flown more than 100 combat missions, logged more than 1,000 hours flying sensitive combat reconnaissance missions around the world. In his role at Indiana University, he's responsible for recruiting, educating, and overseeing the preparation of officer candidates. He has a very long resume, as you can imagine. His nickname is Too Fast. <laughs> Remember, he flies jets. <laughs> Would you please welcome Lieutenant Colonel Shawe Liu. Thank you. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope to live up to my call sign by making this not too long. <laughs> Thank you for being here on this cold December afternoon. Reese Across America's mission is to honor, remember, honor, and teach. And I am thankful to be amongst you in support of that mission. But picture this, on December 17th, 1777, three months after the capture of Philadelphia to the British forces, General Washington led his 12,000 men troops down towards Valley Forge, a place much colder than today. It's a site of terrible suffering, but of unshakable determination. They fought against superior training, equipment, finances, the strongest Navy in the world, and with at least one third of all colonists still loyal to the British crown. Yet they persevered because their cause was, uh, was virtuous. 
It will be six more years before the Treaty of Paris and 12 more years before the ratification of the Constitution of the United States. Every time I think about the Revolutionary War and or when I hear the national anthem, the final verse gives me chills. For the land of the free and the home of the brave. Freedom and liberty. In remembrance, our founding fathers fought to be heard. They fought for the freedom to have a voice in their own affairs. They fought and died so we had the liberty to pursue our own happiness. And they codified this idea of freedom and liberty into a living document called the Constitution. Our airmen, soldiers, sailors, and Marines take an oath to this idea of liberty, not to a king or a tyrant, not to a political party, but to the Constitution of the United States, an oath to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, bearing true faith and allegiance to the same. Freedom and liberty. The United States is the idea of freedom and liberty. And when others have threatened this idea, young men and women have answered the call to defend it time and time again. On the beaches of Normandy, on the island of Iwo Jima, they carried our, our march against tyranny, against communism, against terrorism. Young men and women did not shy away when called, and they did so with the support of men and women like you. When our enemies have tried to cripple us, to try to destroy our resolve, such as at Pearl Harbor or during the World Trade Center, they have failed. In fact, these major events only united us, made us stronger, even more determined to fight because our cause is righteous. Bravery is not the absence of fear, but the resolve that something is more important than that fear. For freedom, for liberty. We care more about the things that we sacrifice for, that we work towards. That is human nature. Since we are given freedom and liberty as a birthright, how much more does liberty and freedom mean when you find a way to serve? Service is not just martial duty. Service is demonstrated in our homes, in our schools, in our communities working towards the betterment of something greater than ourselves. How much more does the idea of America ring true when we teach our children not to take for granted the sacrifices others have made? Yes, freedom is a right. Liberty is a right. But service is a duty. It's a duty of every citizen to remember honor and teach. Wallace Bruce once said in those regards, those who keep the faith and have fought the fight, the glory is theirs, but the duty is ours. As we stand here together today in remembrance to honor those who have served and sacrificed and carry on to the duty to teach the next generation, we stand here assured that whenever our freedom and liberty come under threat, we as a people, a nation, brave, united, will always answer our nation's call. We do this not for ourselves, not for a king or queen, but for the idea of the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Today we show a united front of gratitude and respect across the United States of America as we remember the fallen, honor those who serve and their families, and teach the next generation the value of freedom. And at this time we will place several wreaths to honor all branches of the U.S. military. Those of you who are going to be placing these branch related wreaths, if you would bring them up, place them, and stay with 
the wreath for just a moment until we conclude. Coming forward is, is, is Debbie Deckard in the crowd? Did Debbie make it? No. Or Joe Harden? No. Okay. So we'll have John Bowman of AMVETS Post 2000, an Army veteran. He will, we'll have him lay a veteran's wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Army. Next is Nancy McGinnis from the American Legion Auxiliary Department of Indiana, alongside Wreaths Across America Committee member Carol Robinson, a member of American Legion Auxiliary Unit 18. They will lay a veteran's wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Marine Corps. Next is U.S. Navy veteran Scott Emery of the Monroe County History Center Cemetery Committee, along with Teresa Chestnut, AMVETS Ladies Auxiliary 2000 President. They will lay a wreath, on a veteran's wreath, in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Navy. Next, we ask Lieutenant Colonel Xiaowei Liu to return with us and be joined by U.S. Air Force veteran Vanessa McClary of the Kiwanis of South Central Indiana as they lay a veteran's wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Air Force. Monroe County Commissioner Penny Githens and Bloomington City Council member Isabel Piedmont Smith will now lay a veteran's wreath in honor of those who are serving in the United States Space Force. Next up is Kelly Rooney, BFW Auxiliary 7850 out of Gosport, along with Nancy Patterson, President of the Daughters of the American Revolution Bloomington Chapter. They are laying a veteran's wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Coast Guard. Gigi Kirkley, an IU student and an intern with the Monroe County History Center, will join with Jim Arnold, a U.S. Army veteran and member of the Sons of the American Revolution, to lay a veteran's wreath in memory of those who served and are serving in the United States Merchant Marines. And next, Monroe County Fair Queen and Unit 18 American Legion Auxiliary member Grace Myers will be escorted by retired U.S. Army Colonel Kirk White as they lay a veteran's wreath in honor of the 93,129 U.S. servicemen and women 
from all branches whose last known status was either prisoner of war or missing in action. These individuals have never returned to their families and homes, and we shall not forget them. And folks, if you'll bear with us and, and stand there for a moment, we're going to get a photo. And while they're doing that, I would ask at this time, all veterans who are in the, who are assembled here today, if you would stand, if you can, if not, if you're already standing, raise your hand, because to all veterans, we thank you for your service as well. Okay, you may return to your seats and shiver. <laughs> Jenny, would you like to come back, please? First of all, thank you so much for doing that wreath presentation. I, I love honoring all the branches that way. And of course, POW MIA, our thoughts and prayers are with those families. This today wouldn't be possible without the Reese Across America Committee for their hard work, and I'd like to introduce them. We had 1,150 veterans that are we are honoring today here at Rose Hill and White Oak Cemetery. That's double the amount of veterans we honored last year. If I say your name? please come forward. Of course, there's myself. I'm the wreath coordinator. I also did the co-location coordinator, public relations, and anything else they needed me to do. Amy Thomas is the event veteran list coordinator, a co-location coordinator, and a volunteer administrator. Carol Robinson, ceremony coordinator. Teresa Chestnut, event fundraising chairman. Veteran Audit Committee, Andrea Hatzel, Scott Emery, and Gigi Kirkley, and Kelsey Bankart, Event Distribution Coordinator. Without Stone Belt Trucking, none of this could have happened. Those that are not present, Janice Wampler, the Secretary, Veterans Audit, Audit Committee, John Summerlot, and members, Julie Bruce, Joanna Wall, Steve Miller, Vicki Swafford, and Harriet Vick. Thank you. <laughs> Next year, we look to increase our numbers again here at Rose Hill. With the work of the audit team, we have discovered over 300 more veterans that either were not labeled, were not discovered, don't have a grave marker. So we continue to grow. We also hope to expand over the years to different cemeteries. In order to do that, we need volunteers. We need committee members willing to do work all year long to make this happen. So if you're looking for something fun to do, join me. <laughs> Amy, I'd like you to come up here and now explain what we're going to do today, because that's the most important thing, is laying the wreaths. I know we've done a lot of pomp and circumstance. Those are important too, but really what we're doing today is remembering our veterans. I want to start by saying thank you for all of you coming in out for this lovely brisk day to lay Reese. Without you, it wouldn't, wouldn't happen or it'd be a long day. Um, there are section leaders out there that um, I appreciate you stepping up and being the ones to actually hand out the wreaths to the, to the volunteers that are laying them. 
I'm going to read kind of a step-by-step -step on how to lay a wreath. Um, some of you have already done it. Some of you got emails, but bear with me. Um, you'll receive a wreath, and you approach to the headstone that is marked with a blue vet flag like this. Do not take the plain ones. Those belong to Rose Hill because there are rose bushes there. Extend the wreath outward, offering it to the veteran. Place the wreath centered at the headstone with the bow at the 12 o'clock position. And if there's a flat plate or a name block, um, just lay it at the bottom of that. And again, at the 12 o'clock position. Say the veteran's name aloud. If the name is not readable, just say veteran. And then tell him or her they are remembered and thank you for your service. Um, do not remove any other wreaths, flowers, coins, rocks, anything that might be on the headstone that a family member or someone else has laid there. Leave, leave those tokens there. For military and cadets that are here, render a slow salute um, or place your right hand over your heart. Non-military, you may do that too or just step away from the um, headstone. Remove the blue flag and return it to the section leader and get another wreath and then continue on. We are not decorating a grave. We are honoring and remembering our veterans. So please take your time. It's not a race. Say their name. Let them know we're here. Um, feel free to take a tag off of any of the wreaths if you'd like. Um, that's a momentum from Wreaths Across America. Uh, we have 1,040 veterans laid here, as Jenny had said. Um, so we couldn't do this without you all helping out to, to get each of these wreaths laid. Also, anyone that can help us to take the broken down boxes to the Monroe County Recycle Center at 3400 South Walnut Street, please take one, two, I don't care, but we do need to take them off of the property today and, and we take them to the Recycle Center. Um, Parents and guardians or chaperones that have any younger volunteers, please um, explain this to them so they understand what's going on. Again, thank you all for volunteering and coming out on this brisk day, and um, enjoy your day. Very quickly, just a personal note. I know it's very cold today, but Anytime I'm in a situation like this where it's really cold, I get a chance to think back. My father uh, served in Europe in World War II and was in the Battle of the Bulge. I don't think, <laughs> you know, anything as cold as it is today can, can compare to anything like that. It always helps me get through really cold days. Well, we truly want to thank all of you for helping us lay wreaths for our departed veterans and for helping to remember and honor them today. We encourage every volunteer here today who places a wreath on a veteran's grave to say the veteran's name aloud, take a moment to thank them for their service to our country. It's a small act that goes a long way toward keeping the memory of our veterans alive. And as Amy said, remember we are not here today to decorate graves. We're here to remember not deaths, but lives. Each wreath is a gift of appreciation from a grateful America. These live balsam fir wreaths symbolize our honor to those who have served our great nation and to their families who have endured sacrifices every day on our behalf. To our children, we want you to understand that the freedoms you enjoy today have not been free, but have come with a cost that someday you may have to pay yourself. As a nation standing together, we can defeat terrorism, hatred, and injustice. And thanks to our veterans, we have the freedom to do just that. Thank you again for coming. We hope you enjoy this opportunity to honor our local veterans who are at rest in this cemetery. And to conclude things, I would like to bring Lisa Lyford forward at this time. She's going to pre present a closing benediction. Lisa is the current American Legion Auxiliary District 7 chaplain. She is a past president of the Department of Indiana American Legion Auxiliary. Would you please stand at this time and remain standing following the benediction. Jeff Brenniger and the Southern Indiana Pipes and Drums will close our ceremony with the playing of taps. 
and you may then proceed to your volunteer station. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to assemble together on the sacred ground. Let us, Lord, to embrace what it truly means to be American, what the blessings are, as well as the responsibilities. Father, we are joined together in spirit with others who are participating in Reese Across America Day at Arlington Cemetery and at other locations throughout the country. We ask your blessings and protection upon us all at every location where these events are being held. Please be with the families of those who have known loss and sacrifice, because when the soldier, when the soldier serves, the entire family serves. Heal their hearts and grant them your peace. Lead us and guide us, Lord. Give us deep and abiding love for you and for our country as we, the citizens, learn to live worthy of the gift of freedom in thought, word, and deed. The gift of freedom is golden, but its loss would be darkness. To, accom to accomplish your will, Lord, help us grow in love for each other. Help us hold to, your, to our faith in you, knowing what is possible by your mercy, mercy and your grace. Father, be with us as we move forward to fulfill your will today as your people, as American people, this day and every day. Amen. Thank you. And to work. <laughs> 